Everybody in this room has this unique opportunity to live out your dream. And the journey that we're about to go on is going to be a hard journey. We're going to be challenged at every turn. The expectations are going to be high. The standards are going to be high. The accountability is going to be high. I make a pledge to you. Our staff makes a pledge to you. Make a pledge to yourself and to each other. So we'll hold ourselves and each other accountable to those standards. It's week number four of this National Football League season, and welcome to the Jason Garrett Show, powered by Reliant Energy, inside the Academy Sports and Outdoor Studios here at the Star in Frisco. Bill Jones, along with Cowboys head coach Jason Garrett, big win over the Arizona Cardinals on Monday night, 28-17. And now we look forward to Sunday noon as the Los Angeles Rams are in town. Let's uh, look back and talk some defense off the top, and how about we talk some Demarcus Lawrence off the uh, top, because... Demarcus Lawrence was named the NFC Defensive Player of the Week, but he is a lot more proud of that big heavyweight championship <laughs> belt that he won for the second time this season. Tell us about the belt. You know, well, let's, let's talk about him first. He's playing great. Uh, he really is. He's off to a fantastic start, and a lot of people have asked me, you know, what's going on with him? And I think as much as anything else, he's healthy. And he worked very hard to get himself healthy uh, here in the last 12 months, and uh, it's showing up on the field. And he's playing with a great spirit, obviously very productive, was around the quarterback uh, all night long uh, the other night in Arizona. Three sacks and a lot of hurries. He's just playing really good football. And, and for that, uh, you get a chance to be named the outstanding player of the game. And we give out boxing gloves. We've done that for a number of years. Uh, you know, the guys who fight, you know, represents fight. Uh, but we added the, the, the championship belt this year, and he's wearing it proudly. Yeah, and, and <laughs> in fact, after the Giants win, I don't think he took it off all week, and I think he's, he's done the same uh, this week. It looks like it's something that they, they're really fighting to get that uh, player of the game award each week. Speaking of fight, I thought your team showed a whole bunch of fight, and that's been a hallmark of your teams ever since you've been the head coach. One play in particular was Des Bryant fighting his way into the end zone, but you had to be proud of the way they yeah, that, that's what our team is all about. Uh, that's what those guys are all about, you know, how they practice and how they play. That's the identity of this football team. It has been for a number of years. And, uh, you know, the other night there were a lot of challenging situations in that ball game. If you think about how we started the game on defense, they went right down and scored a touchdown. We went three and out. They came back and they had another good drive. Eventually we got a, we got a good stop there and they missed a field goal. Uh, but throughout that ball game, our team demonstrated fight and kept battling and scratching and clawing individual guys, the units, and then across the units, just as a team. And uh, in the end, that was the difference in the game. Dak Prescott, uh, he, of course, he scored the touchdown on the zone read play uh, late in the first half. Really, the offense didn't have any opportunities early in the game, just six plays the, the first 16 minutes or so of the game. But I thought that Dak, not only the way he ran the football, he made some big plays in the passing game in the second half. What were your thoughts on Dak's performance? Again, I go back to that word fight. He, you know, when you play that position and you do have a three and out, then you have another three and out, and you're watching the first uh, quarter of the game. You're watching half of the second quarter before you get an opportunity. You know, sometimes you get a little anxious, start getting a little nervous, maybe you get a little impatient. But, uh, you know, he, he just battled. He just he hung in there. Uh, it took us a little while to get the running game going the way we wanted to. So in the interim, he made a couple plays with his feet, you know, the touchdown that you mentioned, but also getting out of the pocket and making some plays down the field. And, and that was big for us. And uh, his poise, his composure, his leadership, and his willingness to compete and fight, it pervades our whole football team. It's contagious. He did a great job the other night. Yeah, and one of the features of this offense is all the weapons that you have. And uh, Bryce Butler comes through in a very big way. I mean, you, you look at the stat sheet, and when Des Bryant, Cole Beasley, and Jason Witten combined for only four receptions in the game, someone's got to come up big, and Bryce Butler came up big. Yeah, you know, the plays were at a premium. Uh, like we yeah. said, not a lot of plays in the first half. We had less than 50 plays in the game you know we wanted to be patient and run the football so uh, you know Dak ended up throwing 18 balls in the game completed 13 of them and you know spread it around and, and no bigger plays than the ones to Bryce Butler again out of the pocket making plays down the field he has such a good feel for giving the receiver a chance uh, down the field but Bryce went up and made those plays up over his head big time plays against really good players and they were the difference making plays in the game all right we're just getting started here on the Jason Garrett show up next it's David Moore of the Dallas Morning News the Jason Garrett Show, presented by Reliant, is brought to you by AT&T, mobilizing your world. Ford, Ford is the best in Texas. The Salvation Army, doing the most good. The University of North Texas, proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. And by Reliant, an NRG company.
This segment is brought to you by the Dallas Morning News. Nobody does sports like Sports Day. Your home for complete Dallas Cowboys coverage. The Jason Garrett Show, powered by Reliant Energy, continues now. Bill Jones joined, as usual, by David Moore of the Dallas Morning News, SportsDayDFW.com. What a matchup of running backs we've got this week. Todd Gurley for the Rams, of course, Zeke Elliott for the Cowboys. But my question to you, David, is about this Cowboys run game and the offensive line. There are some critics out there who say this offensive line isn't performing like they have in the past. What say David Moore? <laughs> well, I think you go back and look at it. Go back and look how the offensive line performed in the first two to three weeks last season. People are remembering it from that point on, I would argue, more than what happens early. Because of the change in the rules, because the offensive line doesn't get that much work in the preseason, doesn't get that physical work in training camp that they once did, it's really a work in progress on the defense going into the season to get that physical edge that really shows and manifests itself over the course of the season. So you have that going. You have two starters in different positions than they've ever played in the NFL. That's right. Yeah, and Lyle Collins at right tackle. When he did play in this line, it was at left guard. And you have Chaz Green at left guard, who was when he was practicing, when he wasn't hurt the last several years, was at the tackle position. So you have two new guys at different positions. You have the fact that you haven't uh, really gotten into your groove yet, and, and it's traditionally slow to come along and you face back-to-back 3-4 -back defenses which you normally don't look which gives you a little bit different feel in the run game. You put all that together I think it's understandable where they are right now. Uh, I, I think they will get better and they You've, you've seen these guys perform before. There's no reason to believe it won't happen again. And now they get back to back to back. Three, four. Three, defenses. yeah. Exactly. Wade Phillips on the other side. All right, Dak Prescott was able to hit a couple of deep passes to Bryce Butler, and uh, that's a good sign. Yeah, you, you talk about the run game. Uh, Arizona, again, uh, eight men, sometimes nine men in the box, wanted to stop Elliott. How do you look at his performance? It was 22 carries for 80 yards and a touchdown. I think you'll take that week in and week out. The critics will point to the fact, well, 50 of those yards came on two runs. So really you're talking about 20 runs of 30 yards. And you had several negative plays in there. Um, but hitting Bryce Butler over the top deep twice in that game is going to be big going forward because it shows that Dak is able to hit those plays down the field, which has been one of the biggest consistent questions about him going in. And if you hit a few of those, Ezekiel Elliott is going to start to break some bigger runs on a more consistent basis. All right, David Moore of the Dallas Morning News. We appreciate it as usual and much more of the Jason Garrett Show to come. Up next, Mickey Spagnola with a very special guest. This segment was brought to you by the Dallas Morning News. Nobody does sports like Sports Day. You're home for complete Dallas Cowboys coverage. Welcome back to the Jason Garrett Show, powered by Reliant Energy. Bill Jones inside the Academy Sports and Outdoor Studios. And now time to see who Mickey has this week, his special guest. Marcus Golden in pursuit of Prescott. Deep throw to the end zone. Caught. Touchdown, Bryce Butler. Well, Bill, this week's special guest is Cowboys wide receiver Bryce Butler. Should I start calling you big play Bryce Butler? You can call me Big B for short. Big B for short. Yes. Pretty good performance on Monday night. Two catches, 90 yards, a touchdown, and almost two touchdowns. Yeah. What got into you? Nothing, man. I just, uh, during the week, I was just telling myself all week, just stick to the fundamentals, stick to your techniques, um, play like you know how to play. Don't make any moment bigger than it, than it actually is. And uh, I just went with that all week, and it showed on Monday. Uh, didn't play that much. But I was ready when uh, my number was called and I made my place. And sort of the situation you're in, the role they've got you in, it's usually not the quantity of catches you make, it's the quality of catches. Right. Like when they come to you, you got to yeah. make a play, right? Right, exactly. You know, it's almost like a pinch hitter in baseball. You know, they're coming at you for the, the big home run ball or just a unique type of play, a different type of route scheme that the other guys may not be running. and. Uh, you know, I like that role. Um, eventually, I know it's going to increase, but we're not worried about that right now. We're just focused on the now, and that's taking care of whatever I get. And, and when you're in that role, there's no margin for error, right? Because you don't get that many chances. Yeah, it's tougher. Um, and that's why you just have to stay ready and just uh, you know focus on your keys. Um, like I said, not make the moment too big. You know, 
when it comes, it comes, and you got to make it, you know. But it's not like when it comes, it's like the end of the world. It's just make the play, just like practice, just like preseason, and everything. Uh, Don't put too out. much pressure on yourself, exactly. right? So this is what we saw from you in training camp. You were making all these big contested catches, coming down with the ball. What does it take to kind of concentrate and make those type of catches consistently? Just bring your eyes with the ball. Um, with me, anytime I make a mistake in not catching the ball, it's because I didn't bring my eyes all the way into my hands. And uh, that's just that's a that's the thing that happens for receivers that catch the ball with their hands. Um, sometimes your eyes can get lazy and your hands are there, but your eyes aren't really there. You don't really know where the ball is, and you just stick your hand out, you know, ready to run. It happened in the Denver game, um, so. Yeah, I was just like, let's just stick to the keys and stick back to the fundamentals like we're in uh, high school again and just focus on every ball that comes your way. So thus the little drill I saw you doing after practice with Keith Smith. Yeah. You guys were throwing balls from different angles right. and flopping them, trying to make sure you had your hands out there to catch them. Right, yeah. You do that often. Yeah, we do that all the time, man. That's me and Beef's drill. Um, bringing eyes to the hand, um, hands to the ball. Just focus on that if I see him. I'm looking at the ball, catching the ball. I'm going to tell him he's me doing it. He'll tell me the So it's a good drill we've been doing since last year. Um, shout out to our choice for the drill. Um, Keep going deep. Got you. All right, Bryce Butt, Cowboys wide receiver. Back to you. All right, thanks, Mickey. Up next, Jason Garrett Show. The coach rejoins us, and we talk about the Los Angeles Rams and running back Todd Gurley. Welcome back to the Jason Garrett Show, powered by Reliant Energy. Bill Jones now joined by Will McClay for his scouting report this week on one of the best backs in the league, and that would be one Todd Gurley. Yes, Todd Gurley is the, the, the piece of the machine that gets the whole thing going here for the Rams. Okay, we're going to take a look at him as an inside runner, outside runner, and in the passing game. Uh, he's a big, fast, physical guy. We're going to look at an inside run first. So what they're going to do here is, first thing they're going to do is they use Tavon Austin in motion. Okay, what he does is it holds the backside, but what happens is it brings the linebacker in. They're going to double team here, climb up, uh, and then the tackle's going to kick out, and here's your alley, and you're going to see the power, the elusiveness, and the speed of Todd Gurley on this play right here. We can run it. You'll see him at the snap. You'll see the linebacker move over, climb up. Now, he breaks an arm tackle, elusive at the second level, then he falls forward. Breaks that arm tackle and gets an extra four or five yards. All yes. right, here's play number two. Now we're going to take a look at him as an outside runner. The Rams do a unique deal. First, here we got Tavon Austin going in motion. What it does is it holds the backside down. Now the defense will be condensed in here. So then what they will do is the receiver will block down. The lineman will pull here. They're going to create an alley. And then you'll get to see the speed and acceleration of Todd Gurley on the outside. Here we go. They go in motion. You'll see the defense condensed. You pull. The widens the defense, there's the alley, and you see the acceleration when he gets to that level, and he's a hard man to tackle when he gets in the secondary uh, and making that decision to tackle him. Their own version of student body left right there. All yes. right, here he is in the passing game. Again, we're going to look at him in the passing game, and again, what the Rams do is they use the field. They condense the formation, keep everybody inside, and they use the field. It's third and four. They see single high safety and thinks man coverage. He's going to be attached to him. He's going to be attached to him. He's got him. He's got him and the linebacker as the running back. So what they're going to do is, because the field is reduced, they're going to pick. They're going to run all three guys there. They're going to pick. And now it's a one-on-one -on -one shot with the running back. You'll see him get the ball in his hands. It's a screen play, a unique screen play. And it's a perfectly legal play. It's a perfectly legal very play. very effectively for them, right? Yes. Everybody's got their man. He slips out of the backfield. There's the pick. Now there's space. Now there's the big body running back running downfield and, again, making a big positive play using his speed. So my question is, how do you stop Todd Gurley? You get as many bodies as you can on him. We've got to tackle him. We've got to slow down the run, make them one-dimensional. What our guys have done a great job with is just taking one day at a time. We had a good day of work today. Uh, expect to come back with the same mindset and mentality tomorrow. And we know that we're going to have to be at our best to get our third win against an excellent Dallas Cowboys team. They go 13-3 and last year, 7-1 and at home. Great road win for them this week, and I've got a whole lot of respect for this organization, Coach Garrett, uh, and you know just from having gone against them a couple times a year. So it's going to be a great challenge for us. And our thanks to Will McClay once again this week as we welcome the coach back into the Academy Sports and Outdoor Studios here. Let's talk about these Los Angeles Rams. Will talks about Todd Gurley, and when you got a running back like that, it can really uh, set your offense apart, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, he's a big-time player, and there's no question they want to give him 
uh, the football. They want to make him the focal point of their offense. And everything they get comes off of that. Uh, the quarterback is playing awfully well right now. Uh, but a lot of that is because of the play action game, the naked game that they're using. And uh, they're putting him in a real comfortable situation. Uh, some good weapons outside, but there's no question the focal point of that offense is number 30. Of course, uh, last year before the draft, you took a long, close look at, at Jared Goff. In fact, had him out at, at Valley Ranch, went out there and worked him out as well. What is it about Jared Goff that, that you really like? Well, there's just a lot to like about him. You know, as a college player, he had so many starts uh, for, for such a young guy, and he was a very productive player. Uh, but when you watched him on tape, uh, you know, the thing that jumped out at us maybe more than anything else was the ability to throw the ball under duress. You know, when people are around him, he was in an uncomfortable situation, just stood in there and kept delivering strikes. And, uh, you know, that's the kind of stuff that you see on tape right now. Obviously, uh, some growing pains his rookie year, but there's no question he's settling in now. He's got a good environment. They're obviously doing a really good job with him from a scheme standpoint. Sean McVay does an outstanding job. And then again, weapons around him improve their offensive line. And he's showing a lot of the stuff uh, in the NFL that he showed in college. And another 3-4 defense you're going up against this week. It's a Wade Phillips defense. What do you expect when uh, Wade is coaching the other side? Uh, just a, a really good uh, challenge for us. Uh, obviously, Wade's been such a great coach coach in this league for so long and uh, you know he has some signature uh, signature uh, <laughs> points of emphasis on his defense uh, and, and they're going to rush the pass so they're going to affect the quarterback they do a great job defending the run uh, you know, they'll play man coverage in the back end but they also will mix in a lot of different coverages that challenge you that way but they play hard they play the right way they got a lot of good players and they're really well coached they've got uh, some signature players on that defense and Aaron Donald is a handful isn't he yeah he, he's an outstanding player and I know he was involved in a holdout but it doesn't look like he's missed a step you know he, he penetrates he disrupts he's he's creating havoc for opposing teams when they run the ball and certainly is affecting the quarterback and you know Quinn uh, their pass rusher outside is a defensive end and they just seem like they got a lot of guys up front who can rush they're really fast defense an aggressive defense and again really well coached and by the way this isn't the first matchup between a Garrett and a McVeigh Sean McVeigh of course the 31 year old head coach of the Los Angeles Rams his grandfather was the head coach of the Memphis Southman of the World Football League in 1974 and matched up against the Houston Texans coached by Jason's father, Jim Garrett. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you, know, you know, John McVay, Sean's grandfather, is a legendary guy in this league, obviously. And of course, the New York Giants head coach, too. Yeah, and, and, and part of the, the San 49ers. Francisco dynasties there with Coach Walsh. And, uh, you know, he and my dad were, have been great friends for a long, long time. So, uh, you know, uh, tremendous respect. And, and obviously, Sean's doing a great job out there with the Rams right now. All right, we continue with the Jason Garrett Show, our unsung hero when we come back. Final couple of minutes here of the Jason Garrett Show powered by Reliant Energy. Bill Jones with the head coach in time for our regular feature. It's our unsung hero of the week and coach has no idea who I'm going to present to him. It's a committee of one. It's like Jerry Jones in the Ring of Honor. I get to name the unsung hero each week. You can approve or not. I'm going with James Hanna. Cowboys tight end who had a key block on the Bryce Butler touchdown. He was matched up with Marcus Golden. But more than anything, his comeback from his knee injury from last year. He's my unsung hero. Well, just from day one, James Hatt has been an unsung hero. You know, we drafted him in the sixth round a few years back. And, you know, just right from the start, he's come in and done everything we've asked him to do, does things the right way. He's the consummate professional, a big part of our success running the football. You know, that, that the tight ends are a big part of the running game. And, you know, that second tight end sometimes is on the front side, sometimes is on the back side. He's been a really effective blocker and really that unsung role. You know, a lot of people don't really notice that, but we certainly do as coaches, and I know his teammates do as well. You mentioned his injury. He's worked very hard to come back from that, and he just does a lot of things that help you uh, on offense and really help your team win. Noon kickoff, fans need to get out there early and be loud, right? Absolutely. All right, Jason, we appreciate it. Good luck, and the Cowboys will be back home next week, too, when the Green Bay Packers are in town. That does it for the Jason Garrett Show for this week. We'll see you again next week. The Jason Garrett Show, presented by Reliant, was brought to you by Ford. Ford is the best in Texas. Bank of America, the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys. Susan G. Komen, reminding you that early detection saves lives. Miller Lite, the only beer of the Cowboys. Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by NFL Game Pass. 
you'll never miss a game again. Enjoy full access to coaches' films and game replays from week one to the Super Bowl. Subscribe at DallasCowboys.com slash Game Pass.